Welcome to this introduction to modelling gas or compressible flow systems in fluid flow. Uh, in this session we will take a look at uh, the subject of gas flow in pipes. Consider some of the settings used when modelling these system types and also look at a number of worked examples. So let's get started. The first thing to note is that when modelling compressible flow systems, fluid flow solves for real gas flow conditions using an equation of state. So the software doesn't make the simplifying assumptions of gas ideality. And assuming gas ideality has several limitations and of course the physical properties of a gas deviate from this ideal. And applying real gas flow conditions of course gives us a much higher degree of accuracy, particularly for high pressure, uh, high flow rates, low temperatures or the closer the gas is to change in fluid phase state. Under these circumstances, if gas ideality has been assumed, the level of error in calculation can be significant. And systems with multiple branch pipe connections and multiple fittings, the design and calculation of gas flow systems becomes quite complex and assuming gas ideality compounds the magnitude of error in the final solution. But the main thing to note here is that fluid flow software doesn't make this simplifying assumption. Okay, so let's consider now at this stage what happens as a gas flows along a pipeline. The gas density decreases, the velocity increases, the temperature decreases, the actual volume flow rate increases, and there can be small changes in fluid viscosity. Uh, the flow can also become choked under certain conditions, and we'll take a little look at this uh, later. So this is just an example case of a single pipe uh, transporting air from a pressure of 1.1 atmospheres to an outlet pressure of 1 atmospheres. And we can see the physical properties have been calculated for the inlet and outlet of uh, this pipeline. So we can clearly see from the calculated results here that the, um, the, the velocity, for instance, has increased from the inlet condition of 60 meters per second to 66 meters per second at the pipe outlet. The inlet density is also changed from 1.3 at the inlet to 1.2 kilograms per meter cubed. So the physical properties are all calculated uh, accordingly. Okay, um, we made reference uh, earlier to choked flow. Uh, choked flow is when the flow becomes limited by the flowing gas velocity, reaching the local sonic velocity of the gas at that temperature and pressure. And therefore, uh, any further reduction in downstream pressure in the line won't produce any additional flow in the system as the flow under that uh, under the choked conditions has become limited. And the software uh, detects choked flow conditions and limits the mass flow accordingly. A warning message is also enunciated for the relevant element uh, showing that this condition has been encountered. So let's uh, let's uh, model uh, this air pipeline to see if we can reach choked flow conditions. So we'll set the inlet pressure to 3 atmospheres and let's set the outlet pressure to 2.6 and calculate the model. Okay, so we don't have any warning messages as of yet and we can see that the flow is 0.57 kilograms per second. So let's reduce the downstream pressure to 2.4 atmospheres uh, and again let's calculate uh, to refresh the results and the flow has increased to 0.67 kilograms per second. Let's reduce it a little further to let's try Let's try 2.2 atmospheres and recalculate and it's increased to 0.75 kilograms per second. So let's now reduce it to 1.1 atmospheres and recalculate. And now we've got a choked flow warning or we've got a warning message for node element number two. So let's look at the messages and we can see for element number two, We've got uh, the calculated pressure at the element is, high, is higher than the entered value, okay? So the entered value, of course, is 1.1 atmospheres. And if we look at the results in, um, let's display it in Pascal's absolute. We're slightly above uh, atmospheric pressure of 101.325 Pascal's absolute, okay? So if I select this, we get a little description of what the warning message means. So we can see we may have encountered uh, choked flow or we have encountered choked flow in this case at the pipe exit. So we've got endpoint choking. Uh, and the flow rate is 0.87 kilograms per second. So let's now reduce this a little bit further. Let's try not 0.5 atmospheres and recalculate. And you can see 
the flow is 0.87 kilograms per second okay and we still have this warning message okay so there's no change in uh, flow as it's limited under this condition as we know the density of a gas flowing in any pipeline is not constant it's a function of temperature and a strong function of pressure it's therefore not meaningful uh, to define gas flow rates in volumetric terms uh, for gas systems without providing a reference temperature and pressure base at which the volume refers to. And fluid flow software allows you to model systems using either S or NTP conditions and you can choose which is applicable to your system like so. Okay so select options calculation select the gas tab and then choose the relevant reference gas volume flow units for your system. S or NTP. I'll just pop that away for the moment and you can see at the very bottom here in the status bar it always tells you which option you have assigned to the particular system you're modeling so it's STP in this particular case and you can of course overcome any potential ambiguity in flow rates in your gas systems uh, by defining mass flow units for any inlet or outlet boundary condition okay uh, just to make the note that gas mixtures can also be created uh, in the software uh, either by mass or mole percent using the fluids that are already available to you uh, in the database okay so you'll see that there's a number of uh, natural gas uh, mixtures there there as well as um, other gas mixtures uh, you can also create um, gas mixtures dynamically on the flow sheet so let's now look at a, uh, a selection of uh, larger uh, modeled example cases so let's look at this first one so this is a tank farm gas collection system okay uh, and the requirement in this case was to design and optimize the system for all five tanks filling and venting simultaneously with air used as a first pass for simplicity uh, as, as the gas in the system Okay, this was a first pass design um, and it was crucial in this system that the inlet operating pressure uh, did not exceed one PSI gauge in line with API 650. Uh, so the software was used uh, by the designer to optimize the stainless steel pipe diameters um, and the inlet operating pressure um, was below the one PSI gauge limit. So let's set the uh, pressure units to PSI gauge and you can see 0.794, uh, 0.77 and so on. The, the uh, calculated pressures at all five inlet points in the vent system are below the one PSI gauge threshold. Let's look at another example case. So we'll look at this um, hospital oxygen system. Uh, so uh, this system uh, has been defined uh, using copper pipework. Uh, it includes VIE or vacuum insulated evaporator plant uh, with a design inlet pressure of um, 511 kPa, at temperature 23 degrees C, oxygen. Um, this system has uh, over 1000 meters of copper pipework, um, degrees copper in this case. Uh, and the system consists of 110 outlets 108 of which have a defined uh, flow requirement of 40 I'll just select an outlet here 40 liters per minute uh, with the final two demand points having flow rates of 140 and 500 liters per minute okay um, and the pipework in this system is distributed across the hospital facility using four main service riser shafts with branch connections to each uh, outlet let's look at another example case uh, we'll look at number four here so this is a compressed air system created by a new user um, so we have air 7.5 bar gauge and uh, the outlet pressure condition is 6.5 bar gauge uh, at each of the outlets in this particular system and the target uh, demand flow rate uh, in the system was 387 kilograms per hour at each of these outlets so let's see I'm looking at kilograms per second here so we'll change it to kilograms per hour just to see if we're close so 378 is the calculated value and 387 was the target value okay um, 446 for uh, element number 8 or boundary element 8 446 378 and so on so 
the system has been set up with a, a booster uh, with a design flow requirement defined for the uh, or a total design flow uh, requirement defined for the system um, and the flow the flow obviously through each of the demand points is a function of um, operating conditions and uh, pipe lengths and diameters and so on so there's scope for further optimization in the system by reviewing pipe diameters uh, to balance out the flow in the system. Okay, you can see that this pipeline is actually turned off at the moment, off or closed. Okay. Let's look at another system, subsea buried pipe system. So this is a natural gas um, pipeline which was developed in fluid flow uh, and the results use as a comparison with a, an old product, gas DP. Uh, which was regarded as being highly accurate. So we've got 70 bar absolute of natural gas at 80 degrees C entering the system. Uh, and we've got 50 meters of pipe work and we're doing a heat transfer calculation. Then we pass below sea level where we have a further 100 meters of pipe work. And then we have a further uh, considerable length of pipe work uh, before we get to the end point where we have defined the flow rate uh, out of the system and the calculated uh, condition of the natural gas at the outlet was 4.2 um, degrees C uh, and we can see that the uh, pressure is also calculated here in bar absolute let's just display the values here now bar absolute and uh, let's reposition the decimal point for temperature so we've got a temperature of 4.17 uh, and pressure of 50, around 50 bar absolute and gas db it calculated 4.1 degrees c with an outlet pressure of 50.9 so the results stack up they're very very close to that old uh, software product which is discontinued okay let's look at another example this is a natural gas distribution system so I'll scroll down a little bit here. We've got an inlet point here of 50 bar gauge natural gas, 100 degrees C. So we've got a single entry point here where the gas flows down to the bottom here where we get to our compressor points where we have 50,000 kilograms per hour defined for each of the um, boosters in the system. So we've got four boosters in this case before the fluid is passed through the system to each of the outlet points or uh, tank nodes in this case which have a pressure defined of 140 bar gauge okay and you can see some of these elements are turned off so we don't have any flow in some of these lines as the status is off or closed this is a blast furnace uh, system so we have our inlet point here we've got 60 millibar gauge of blast furnace gas which was a mixture created in the database Temperature of 30 degrees C. We've got another inlet point down here uh, with similar design conditions. And we've got our system calculated with flow distribution uh, established throughout the system. If we look at some of these outlet points, we can see we've got 50,000 meter cube per hour, 56,000 meters cube per hour uh, gas holder, and we've got flare number one, number two, uh, boiler, and so on. Okay, so boiler number three and so on. Okay. Um, this is a nitrogen distribution system. So I'll scroll down a little bit here. We can see the inlet point, seven bar gauge of nitrogen passing through the system with uh, fixed flow rates defined uh, at various points in the system. So we've got 150 meters cubed per hour, 350. 600, uh, 300 and so on. So the, the pressure uh, required to achieve that defined flow rate is uh, automatically calculated by the software. Now we mentioned S and NTP earlier. If I look at the status bar we can see it's STP for this particular model uh, and for this element that we've selected, element number one, the user has defined a volumetric flow requirement of 300 meters cubed per hour and if we look at the results we can see the STP value of 300 meters cubed per hour because of course that is what's assigned to this flow sheet but the software automatically calculates the uh, the flow at NTP condition and the actual flow at the pressure and uh, temperature condition of the flowing fluid okay now it's kilograms per hour here I can change that to meters cubed per hour once again if I wish like so okay so that's just a simple uh, 
nitrogen system. Um, I'll look now at the last system, which is a steam flow system. And this model illustrates the calculation of heat transfer with steam. Um, the north side red pipes are uninsulated and south side green pipes are insulated with varying thicknesses of mineral wool insulation. Okay, so um, some pipes are insulated and some are not. Okay, so you can see the red pipeline here. We're doing a heat uh, transfer calculation with uh, no insulation. Okay, and the green lines here have 100 millimeter uh, mineral wool insulation. So if we look at um, the results, you can see we've got 54 kilowatts of heat transferred in the green line and 2,030 kilowatts of heat transferred in the uh, red line, Okay, which has a, uh, a length of 150 metres and diameter of 12 inch. So fluid flow software also allows you to model fluids in the supercritical region. Uh, let's consider the following example of a carbon dioxide line. So I'll just place two pressure boundaries on the screen or on the flow sheet, connect them with a single steel pipe and I'm going to select both the inlet and outlet boundary elements at once and I'll set the pressure to mega, megapascals gauge with an outlet pressure of 8 and an inlet pressure of 9 uh, megapascals gauge. I'll set the temperature to 50 degrees C and I'll choose carbon dioxide. Calculate the model, and we can see that we're, we've got a supercritical fluid, and we're using the duct spray correlation. Okay, so we've got a supercritical gas uh, in this particular uh, case, and that concludes today's session.